Okay, so I want to ask you, Zach, a question. And the question is, what do you think is the single biggest way, avenue, that crypto is going to grow? And I'm talking now about from a macro standpoint. How does, and I, and I know I just threw you under the bus, you're like, you didn't know that question was coming, but how do you envision, what do you think are some of the steps and some of the things that, has to happen for crypto to go from, you know, 1 trillion market cap now to back to 2.8, where we were back in the day, three, four, five, six, seven trillion. What's your stance there? I think first and foremost, crypto will grow with or without people on board, right? I mean, slowly but surely it is being adopted more. And we saw that in the last bull run. But I mean, I think what you're really asking is like, what's that thing that's going to take us over the edge and to get people in their 40s and 50s to look at it? And I think it's regulation because okay. I think once regulation comes, the narrative around in the media changes, right? Because now it's not looked at as, as this big, bad stepchild over here, right? It's, it's part of, it's another asset class that's mm -hmm. regulated, that's understood, that's here to stay, that's innovative, that's changing our lives in this way and that way and this way. The problem is it's doing all that right now, but those narratives aren't being put out to the masses. Right. I mean, imagine if people on, you know, the CNBCs or the Fox businesses and all these newscasts, imagine if they actually broke down how crucial and how important what XRP is doing and how much better it is than the swift payment system that we've been used using for decades. As imagine an example, actually, yeah. as an yeah. example, imagine if they actually broke that down and, and said, OK, this is how much better it is. And this is why it suits a global economy so much better than our old archaic system does. Right. That could help right there. Right. Right. Um, why is Bitcoin so different? Well, they're not printing, you know, Bitcoins and Bitcoins and Bitcoins. There's a finite supply, which, you know, supply and demand shows us. Imagine if they went through these narratives that we know in crypto. Well, hold on. So let's stop there. You said regulation, which, you know, I agree with, but let's also dig into that. What does that really mean? You're talking about, Regulation has to come down from on high to make crypto air quotes coming by the look, look safer or more legitimate, which I don't agree with, but we yep. both know where that's coming from. And fundamentally to me, regulation, and you know where I'm going with this, regulation unlocks the ability for who to be able to then go out and help grow. It's the insert, you go go from there. I know you, you know where to take that. Yeah, I mean, imagine if, People, I mean, how many people have, you know, huge portfolios out there, right? That are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, right? Imagine with they, Schwab like, and Fidelity yeah. and by who that's big, really what I was trying to get at, right? Big, so go ahead. Yeah, the big dogs. Imagine if you can invest in Bitcoin right through your Charles Schwab account. Exactly. Right? Right through your yeah. Fidelity account. Yeah. And there's some ETFs out there and all that, but why why invest in a Bitcoin ETF? Just invest in Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, like this, um, what, what is it? I don't even know what the ticker symbol is like bit, bit, bito or whatever. Yeah, and, like that's how people get exposure because it's less risky. It's like you're, you're investing in Bitcoin without investing in Bitcoin, just invest in Bitcoin. But, uh, but, but then there's a learning curve on how to do that. Where should, yeah. I, should I have it on centralized exchange? Should I have it on a ledger? Where should oh, yeah, I put it? Yeah. Is it something physical? Like yeah. what is it? Right. Yeah. 